Happy Friday, RC fam. Today, we're going to take the brand new Tamiya BT-01 Toyota Supra. We're going to do a little bit of testing with it. We've got two different motor configurations, motor setup configurations. We're going to try a rear-wheel drive versus a front-wheel drive setup today, see which is the better uh, working of the two options. And we're going to talk about this brand new chassis. We've got some fresh paint on here. Uh, I think it's looking pretty cool. A little throwback to a certain Fast and Furious type of a movie. I thought about getting the stickers and, you know, fully doing it up Fast and Furious style. But, uh, I, you know, I didn't know if I was going to really enjoy this chassis or not because I had a bit of a tough time loving the MB01. This is really a larger version of an MB01. But anyway, I'm getting off topic. Let's take a deeper look at this chassis and then go outside and do some testing with it. So first thing is first, let's talk about the paint. Now I'm hoping this shows up well on camera, but this is a very, very vibrant orange. The colors I chose on this guy, we went with Tamiya's PS24. I backed that with PS white. I know some of you guys are saying you should probably have backed it with silver. I've always liked backing my fluorescent colors with white. I just find it gives me the pop that I want. I'm not looking for any kind of metallic effect on this. So I just really wanted it to pop. So I backed it with PS White. The wheels came in silver. So did the spoiler and so did the side mirrors. They were all made out of silver or like, like a gray molded plastic. So I went ahead and painted them with some PS5 black to complete the look and make this thing a little more menacing. The silver just wasn't working for me. But have a look at that. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think about that. And there when the sun hits it, you can really see that kind of that Beautiful fluorescent, kind of pearly, kind of turns orange. Woo, she looks good. All in all, the build went really fast. This is actually a surprisingly quick build and a surprisingly easy build. There isn't really much of a gearbox to fuss with. There isn't really much drivetrain on these things. It's a very, very simple, very basic chassis. I think in three hours I had this thing done, like done, done. Everything done, painting the body outside between coats, run upstairs, tinker a bit more, like done, done, three hours. So that was pretty impressive. I like that part about this chassis. Let's talk about the aesthetics of the body. The body looks gorgeous. Typical Tamiya, just knocking it out of the park. There are headlight buckets in here. However, they weren't drilled out for LEDs. I might put lights in it down the future. I don't, in, or down the line uh, in the future. I'm not too sure yet. Tail lights, they look sick. I love the back ends of these 90s Supras. No taillight buckets in this guy though. Let's get this body off and talk about what's underneath here. Well, that's a bad start. Put a bit of weight on it. One of my lower shock <laughs> spring thing doodads flew off. And there it is in all of its glory. Again, this is really just a stretched out version of an MB01. Virtually identical in every single way. Let's get this shock fixed. It's been a bit of a bad omen, isn't it? Friction shocks for the win. But there's the chassis right there, guys. Really uh, a pretty simple layout, kind of a two-piece chassis. You start by building the back end of it. You throw the transmission in. And it's really, like I said before, not really much of a transmission. You've just got a motor with a pinion connected to a spur gear in here. The spur gear is direct drive into this tiny little drive shaft right there. The smallest prop shaft you've ever seen, which goes right into the rear gearbox, which isn't even a gearbox. There's just one gear inside here that goes directly to a differential and that's it. So a very, very simple, very straightforward drivetrain on this guy. Now the default configuration in the manual has you build it this way, which is rear mounted motor, rear wheel drive. And that's how we're going to start off our testing today. I think a car like this just needs to be rear wheel drive. It's just kind of part of like an authentic sports car thing. It's got to be rear wheel drive, doesn't it? Front wheel drive's cool. I mean, it works. If you watch my last set, set of videos on the MB01, I could barely drive it in rear wheel drive. It was all over the place. When I switched it to front wheel, the thing was on rails. It made a huge difference. So I think that's going to be the same case with this one. I'm hoping the longer wheelbase makes it a little more stable in the rear wheel drive config, but I'm worried. And why am I so worried? I'll tell you guys why I'm really worried. This thing's pretty sloppy. The MB01 was a slop monster. This guy, let's look at these rear wheels. There's, there's just so much going on. <laughs> Have a look right here. Like you can, your toe moves a lot your camber like it's just the whole thing just moves and that's really a bit of a design flaw to this chassis the, the the pro to this chassis is that you've got so many versatile setup options you can do rear wheel drive front wheel drive you can do front motor and rear wheel drive which by the way 
I'm not planning on doing. If you guys really want to see it, let me know and I'll do it for you. It's a little more of a pain configuring everything. You've got extra parts you got to bolt onto the chassis. There's a little spring and a one lonely little ball bearing that has to get used. Uh, and really, I don't, it doesn't even make sense to me, but, but I'm not a pro at this kind of thing either. So if you guys think it makes sense to have the motor up front and a rear wheel drive setup, let me know. Going back to the, the good part of the chassis again is that it's got this versatility to it. We want to switch this thing to front wheel drive. It is so easy. Really, the back of the car is going to now become the front of the car. Think about that for a second. So you're going to remove this front plate that has your body post on it and your steering mechanism. Remove the same plate on the rear, switch the two around, and now your steering is in the front, which was the rear, <laughs> and your rear body posts are in the rear, which was the front. The kit comes with a shorter steering linkage rod, and because now your steering bell crank is going to be over here, just a short little steering linkage, and that's it. It's a really simple, really quick, easy switchover. The rear has become the front, and your body, which once faced this way, will now face this way, and now you've got a front-wheel drive front motor car. Very, very ingenious design. The bad part is it's just so sloppy. I mean, you know, the front end has the steering mechanism. Jeez Louise, I got to take these things off. The steering mechanism is just so, like, there's just so much moving around on it. Just the geometry of everything. It's, it, it's just sloppy geometry. I guess it's just how it is. But let's talk about the pros. A couple more pros about this chassis is that it does kindly accept a modern lipo. Thank you, Tamia. Thank you for doing that. The tires feel good. The tires have a nice soft, um, nice soft tread to them. No tire foams, unfortunately, which I wish it did come with. Bushings throughout this thing. I didn't build it to any kind of a special spec. So I've even used the plastic bushings that the kit came with. It did not come with any electronics other than the motor. So I did drop an ESC in here. That's an old axial ESC that came from my SCX10, my original SCX10. This ESC is probably 10 years old and it will not die. So it's been passed around a lot. It just works. So it's in here for some testing. What else can I tell you about this thing, guys? It only comes with friction dampers, but I'm going to say this, they actually work pretty good. There's going to be a bit of jiggling going on here. No, not that kind of jiggling. The camera might jiggle a little bit. Okay. Check this out. It actually works pretty good. And keep in mind, there's no battery in here. Not bad, right? Look at the front. I have no idea how or why the suspension works the way it does. It actually works pretty well. So again, if you're on a budget and looking for hop ups on this thing, I would start with ball bearings. So when you build it, you put all your ball bearings in. Shocks can wait. It handles pretty good with a stock friction damper. So I think that covers all the bases when talking about this chassis. If you guys have any more questions, throw them down in the comment section below. And also while you're here, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're really looking to grow this channel. So all those little clicks mean so, so much to all of us YouTube content creators. If you take a minute and do that. I'd really appreciate it. So let's do a quick comparison to the MB01, the little brother that could, the MB01 Alfa Romeo. By the way, guys, if you haven't watched my build series on this, please do. I put together a little playlist for you. Got a nice epic running video. There was a fire. There they are. We've got the bigger brother here, the BT01. Here's a little brother, the MB01. Now the MB01 is set up in the front wheel drive, front motor configuration. And the BT01 is in the rear wheel drive, rear motor configuration. They're basically identical. They've got the same little kick up here to get your batteries in, just like that. The way that receivers and ESCs are mounted right on top, the exact same. I mean, look at these parts, guys. They're, even these, these parts look to be completely interchangeable. I had a viewer ask recently, could you put the upper and lower suspension arms on, of the BT-01 on the MB-01 to make it a wider track? And from what I can tell, it looks like you can. They look to be the exact same part. But the way the servo is mounted, here we've got the short linkage because we're front wheel drive. Here we have the long linkage because we're uh, rear wheel drive with the motor in the rear. Basically identical chassis, just one is much smaller than the other. This is again the BT-01 and it's got much larger wheels than the MB-01. It's got more of that true 10 scale touring car style of a wheel. Whereas here you've got more of that M series style of a, of a smaller tire, smaller wheel combo. We've got different tread patterns on there as well. And again, neither one came with a foam. If you are looking at getting into one of these, now you know what is what. If you have any questions, throw them down in the comment section below. Always happy to get back to you guys. If you guys want to see a video on how to fix that burn stain, let me know. I think, uh, Fred, I think you said that you wanted to see it. If anyone else does, let me know, and I'll put the video together for you guys. 
And I'll tell you guys, this camera does not do this color justice. I'm looking at it through the camera and it looks muddy and kind of dark. And I'm looking at it in person and it's just like radiating neon orange. <laughs> we got the trusty backpack here to come along with us with a bunch of tools and everything we need, radios, all that good stuff. And then I also brought the box, which has some goodies in it we're going to need to convert this to front wheel drive. Now we're switching gears over to the GoPro. Hopefully that color pops a little bit more with this nicer camera. Woo, that looks good. So I've got a nice big open parking lot behind me. I don't really know exactly what kind of testing we're gonna do here today, guys. Just kind of get a feel for the car in the two different configurations. Again, we're gonna start off with the rear wheel drive rear motor setup and let's just see how it handles hopefully it handles well <laughs> fingers are crossed look at that flop look at that tire flopping around look at a big floppy noodle we've got this nice long crack here i'm gonna just i'm just gonna drive straight along this crack and watch the rear end kind of it does this, kind of kind of just does what it wants to do. Just just keep an eye on that little sweet little super booty. Look at it. Look at it. It goes wherever it wants. So that is that's one quarter throttle. And I hope the camera catches it, but the back end is kind of tracks here and tracks there, and it kind of pulls the front end here and there. It really does whatever it wants to do. Anyway, let's let's continue on. Let's get some speed going, see how this thing performs. That's full speed. So it's not fast, but with the stock silver can, it's actually pretty good. I think it's probably 17 miles an hour or so, 15. Now look at this. We can turn. That's full speed. And it's not spinning out on me like the MBO one did. Even on that little jump right there. Oh yeah, that handles way better than the MBO one. I can drive this thing in rear wheel. I want it. I was gonna see if I can get the back end kick out for a drift, but there's no chance. It's gonna do a full throttle, just full blast. Let's see what she does. That wasn't too bad. Pulled to one side a little, diffed out a little. You can hear the diff diffing out, but that's okay. Let's try it again. Not on the paint this time. Full throttle blast, see what she does. That's a drivable car. I gotta say guys, I'm pretty impressed. It was really planted. Um, I came in here with a lot of, I'd say high reservations after the MB01, which was just all over the place in rear wheel drive. This guy is holding up really well, despite the sloppy rear end. I think the longer wheelbase is really helping it stay planted. Yeah, what a difference that makes guys. I am so happy with that. <laughs> this thing again is completely stock. And I did everything I could to try and get that back end to kick out and it would not kick out. So that is a really, really good sign. This is a good platform. We got something to work with here. I'm excited, so. So this is really simple, guys. Again, we're gonna do this in real time. We're gonna make this thing go from front wheel or rear wheel drive to front wheel drive. So right now I'm just removing the front, like a bulkhead stiffener kind of a thing, dewey doodad, which also incorporates the steering mechanism. So we're gonna start off by removing this longer steering rod and the kit gives you a shorter one right here. 
that we'll use in a second. The amazing thing about this kit setup is that everything's kind of, seems like two screws do all the work. So I just took those two screws out and there's my steering mechanism. And that's now gonna go to the back of the vehicle, which will be, soon become the front of the vehicle. Two more screws right here. Easy peasy, pop off these doodads here. So two screws. So now our rear bulkhead dewey doodad is gonna go to the front and pop in there like that. You know, after using a proper JIS screwdriver, going back to a Phillips just seems so barbaric. So there's that. Now we're gonna take the little steering links, what was once a steering link. Now it's kind of a toe adjustment. Bam, bam. Now our steering apparatus will go up here. Beautiful, pop the steering links on. Awesome, just like that. And then we've just gotta connect our final linkage to the steering servo like that. Again, it's just two screws. Everything's just two screws, it's so easy. Two screws there, two screws back here. This would be a really great platform for like indoor carpet racing. If any of you guys are looking for like a budget friendly local club race car, this might be a good, whoops, a good option. Like that, and then this cat's gonna go here. Now I said it earlier when I was in the hobby room there, if you guys want to see the third configuration option for this, which is front motor rear wheel drive, let me know. It's it's a lot more involved uh, of a switchover than this. This is really simple. Personally, I don't really understand how it would be any better, but if you wanna see it, let me know and I'll make it happen. Bumper has been moved to the front, so now, switch the body around. Oh, put these guys back on. So I wasn't timing that, but I'm gonna say, what was that guys, five minutes maybe? And we now have a front wheel drive car. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? <laughs> Those wheels are spinning the wrong way. <laughs> There's one more extremely crucial step that I forgot. You gotta flip the differential. What an idiot. There we go. So a couple screws up front here again. Guys, only two screws. I don't know how they made this so simple, but they did. So that comes off just like that. So the diff came out this way. Now to get your car to drive the right way, just give it a 180 flip. Your little O-rings, make sure they go back in. I'll do that in a second. That O-ring back in there. We got rocks flying everywhere. Bingo, bango. And front wheel drive and we're even going the right way. How about that? So what's that guys, 10 minutes? Under 10 minutes we can say, switch it over. She's alive and she's front wheel drive. Now you gotta switch over your steering trim. Oh boy, what are we doing? Yeah, you know what boys, that steering is out to wax. So I'm just gonna recenter this. Quick little pit stop. Let's center that steering cause it's a little out of whack. All right. Oh, now what? Why is my steering servo freaking out now? What the heck is going on? Come on, servo, figure it out. What do you want out of life here, bud? Plugged in for too long or what? You know, a guy buys a garbage servo expecting it to act perfectly, and then it dies on him when he's doing some testing outside in the field. <laughs> Bust out the RC emergency kit. I don't know if I have a spare servo in here, guys. This could be the end of the testing for today. Oh, Phil, you good little boy scout. Look at that, we're prepared, boys. If you guys haven't seen this kit yet, this Dirt Tracks tool, wife got me this for Christmas. Little stocking stuffer. This is an amazing little tool. All the most popular sizes you need are in here. Fantastic tool, saved my bacon more than once. I think this is like the hot rod god saying, no, front wheel drive sucks. Don't do it, Phil, don't do it. Just say no to front wheel drive. <laughs> There it is, full tilt. Okay, so let's start off the same way. We got this nice long kind of mossy crack here. <laughs> mossy crack. And we're gonna see if this thing actually goes straight. Quarter throttle. Not too bad. 
Not bad. Let's give it the let's give it the beans. See what she does here. Pretty stable over that crack there. Very stable, actually. A little bit of understeer, actually. It kind of little bit of understeer. Ooh, but if you let off the gas at the right time, hit a turn. Girls on rails. Well, this is this is nice. Front wheel drive's good. Let's see how she handles when the tires get a little bit wet. We've got this little bit of water trickling down from the forest over here. Get those tires wet. And now let's see how she goes. Yeah, it handles really well. Well guys, final thoughts on that little experiment. I would say, let's say this, that the BT-01 works really well with the rear wheel drive configuration. Rear motor, rear wheel drive, which makes a lot of us hot rod and, and you know sports car purists very happy. I think a lot of guys wanted to see a rear wheel drive work. Um, this, this definitely works. Front wheel drive works, but it's just not, I don't know, there's a little bit of understeer. I'd rather have oversteer than understeer. I'd rather have the back end kick out and be able to control it that way versus the little bit of understeer that I felt, which I'm sure you can learn how to work with and, and master in this chassis. But um, just after, you know, a couple of minutes of running, I would say that understeer was was pretty evident. So uh, if I were to race this chassis or, or, you know, go back to running this thing again, I would definitely put it back to rear wheel drive. I think that's where it really shined the best. And the brightest. <laughs> now there is a third option. I mentioned it before. I'll say it one final time here, guys. I can do a front motor rear wheel drive. And I don't know if that's going to help things out at all. It sounds just like a really goofy setup. I would think if you want rear wheel drive, you want as much weight over the wheels for traction. But now the motor is going to be up front on one side. It just sounds pretty terrible to me. But let me know what you think about that setup in the comments below there. And if enough people want to see it, we'll make it happen. It's just a little more work. You have to take the transmission out and um, take the gears out. There's a whole different process to it. It's not nearly as simple as the rear wheel to front wheel switch was. Now, on top of all that, I think it would be interesting to see an MB01 versus BT01 shootout. What do you guys think about that? If you want to see that, let me know in the comments below because I could get my wife out here, we could drive both of these and really see which one's the better performer. I, I think we know who the better performer is going to be. I think the BT-01 will crush the MB-01. The longer wheelbase keeps it way more stable, um, which was really nice. Really fun to drive. Really nice to drive. I got, I I'm happy. I'm really happy with this chassis. I think they did a good job with it. So that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please drop a thumbs up, like it, subscribe, share, do all those things. Press all the buttons, would you? It really helps a channel out. That is currency to us YouTubers. And uh, I'll tell you, we need some currency these days because if uh, if you guys would really help me out, guys, it'd be amazing if you hit that thumbs up and subscribed uh, and shared and did all that fun stuff. It really means a lot. And uh, if you like the content, you know, I love making it for you guys. I really do. I'm loving this. So all those little things add up. I really appreciate it, guys, if you did that, commented, all, all of the above. And if you want to see any more action with this chassis, just let me know down below. I'll make sure to get some more action videos for you guys. This, this could be a good candidate for a nice running video, to be honest. Put some Fast and Furious decals down the side. I could do a tribute to Brian. Maybe something like that would be cool. But to sum it up, the BT-01 is a winner. If you haven't got one yet, check them out. Eliminator RC has a lot of inventory still. Coupon code down below, Poor Boys RC, 15 bucks off your order of $100 or more. I don't see a penny of that, guys. That is just right for you guys and for the uh, viewers of this channel. So, you know, help a nice little mom and pop RC brick and mortar store and uh, and save a few bucks yourself. We've got great pricing uh, and, and free shipping as well, which is pretty fantastic. So, uh, so be sure to check them out. Links to everything that we're talking about here are all down below. And until next time, be excellent to each other. <laughs>